All right, we're back, of course, talking Final Fantasy VII. We're talking Remake Part Three. We are once again talking about an upcoming new vehicle, this time the submarine. Very recently, of course, we did a video talking about the high wind, my thoughts, kind of wants, expectations. So I figured we'd do a kind of similar video for the submarine, the kind of lesser talked about vehicle when it comes to Remake Part Three. Um, I think it's maybe just a little bit less iconic than the high wind. Obviously, the high wind's kind of your main means of travel. When you once you get it, you can travel the entire goddamn world, right? It does have iconic things with it, of course, with like the one of like the few optional dungeons with the sunken Gelnica at the bottom of the ocean, and of course the fight with Emerald Weapon. Also, it seems like every time we talk about the High Wind in some way on the channel, there's at least like one comment regarding the submarine, which we got also with that last video we did. So here we are. So I do want to mention too, really quickly before we hop into the video here, that the submarine has been more or less confirmed. Uh, we got this from the Rebirth Ultimania earlier this year. Audrey did a translation about it where Namora talked about. I was wondering how they're going to handle like traversing the ocean floor. So she dropped this tweet back in April that says, Some gameplay elements Namora is wondering how to best create in Part 3, where to land an airship realistically, how to portray giant weapons roam in the world, how to traverse the ocean floor. Normally I try to avoid Audrey's translations when I can, just because sometimes she's hit or miss, uh, but I don't know if Shinra Arc or like Genki or anybody else did any translations of this particular part of the Ultimania. And unless you can interpret the Japanese word for like ocean floor or ocean into something else, it should be relatively accurate. The submarine being a part of Remake Part 3 is not really surprised. It's a part of the actual story, right? We chased down the red submarine to destroy it to get the huge materia. And we also needed to access, like, the key to ancients, right? At some point in the story when we got to go back to the Forgotten Capital and use it to see that Aerith actually activated Holy, right? Actually, I just thought of this while making the video. The only thing that might be kind of against the possibility of the submarine being in the next game, if we didn't have that no more quote, is that they didn't tease the mini game with the gold saucer, right? When you get to the gold saucer in the original FF7, there's a couple games you can't access, like the submarine game, the torpedo attack, I think it's called, and the snowboarding, right? And you can't do those mini games in the gold saucer until you've done their story the counterparts, right? And in kind of a similar fashion with FF7 Rebirth, they tease the upcoming snowboarding mini game that we'll have to do in the story with the third game. As far as I'm aware, there's nothing in the gold saucer and Rebirth that alludes to the submarine being a mini game at all. Or there's not like a arcade submarine that you would like sit in and play or whatever like there was in the original final fantasy 7 i could be wrong on that maybe there's dialogue somewhere there's a lot of npcs there could be people talking about it or discussing something like that somewhere along the way but in like the event square speed square and whatever other, other squares there would be games i, I couldn't find anything i kind of ran through the gold saucer really quickly for this video because i just thought about the fact that there's not a tease for that it could be too that they got rid of the submarine minigame it'll probably still be a part of the story but like the minigame itself unless they completely revamp it is not really fun it's kind of boring it's not hard it's very very easy they also introduced a new shooting minigame with the Galactic Savior, so maybe that's kind of like the replacement of Torpedo Attack. I don't know. Topping right into it, some of the stuff in this video will be kind of similar to the High Wind video, some of the, like the ones and stuff like that. For example, I want to be able to walk around on the submarine. It's this is something you get to do kind of with the original Final Fantasy VII. It's only during this particular mission where you're going to blow up the other submarine and get the huge materia. You do get to see the inside of the submarine. You get to walk around a little bit and see the inside, but it's not like the High Wind. Once you get free roam, you can't hit triangle to like come back into here and walk around. It's going to be kind of weird, right? Because they went through the effort of designing the inside of that submarine, but you can't go back to that. It's only there for that one particular segment, and that's it. But for me, that's a pretty obvious change that I like to see in the third game, even if there's really nothing too much to it. Just be able to go back into there and kind of walk around and talk to the crew or talk to the party members, check out the other rooms and things like that that are in there. Even if there's nothing to really do or find, just kind of a nice little quality of life update because it really doesn't make sense that you can't do it. Since we mentioned the Red Submarine a time or two in the video already, we might as well throw it in the video, the option to get the Red Submarine. It's kind of a... A lesser known thing in the game just because you have to actually fail destroying the red submarine which does make you lose the uh, huge material from that and it's really hard to fail that because it's so fucking easy but if you actually do fail that you know, mission i guess you have the option of going back to like the underwater reactor and stuff and getting the red submarine instead which is pretty cool it's actually something i didn't know for the longest time because i've never failed that submarine mission because again it's almost impossible to fail unless you're just really really bad um, so I think it's cool to have that option. I don't think the punishment for getting the Red Submarine in the third game should be losing out on a huge materia, but maybe they can just find a way for you to access the Red Submarine instead or something. Moving on from there, the next thing I want from the submarine is being able to explore the wider ocean, pretty much the rest of the world. With the original Final Fantasy VII, this highlighted area in the center is all you can explore with the submarine. You can't really access the rest of the planet. Essentially, it's just the area in between all the continents. It's where you can drive the tiny Bronco in the water in Rebirth. That, that whole area you're driving around with the tiny Bronco at is where the submarine is accessible in the original FF7. A relatively obvious improvement from the original FF7 is to allow us to explore the rest of the world, right? Now, I don't necessarily think that they need to create pretty much a second world map below the surface of the water because that is asking quite a bit. That'd be pretty cool if they could do it, but that is asking quite a bit. 
So I don't know exactly what you do with the rest of the world. Um, the first thing that comes to mind for me, for my OG Pokemon fans out there, is like Gen 3 Pokemon, where you, you have the dive HM, where you can like, you find dark patches in the water and you can dive down and explore a little bit. Something along those lines, like maybe in the wider ocean, when you get outside that middle area between the continents, the wider ocean, there's maybe there's only certain locations that you can actually dive at. That's just kind of the first thing I gravitate towards in terms of being able to use the rest of the world for like the submarine, because I think, you know, them actually creating essentially a second world map under the water would be kind of demanding, but if they want to go that route, I mean, I'm not against it. It's just, that's kind of the easier workaround. I do prefer an actual like second world map, but you know, whatever. Kind of in the same realm of discussion, we want more locations to find with the submarine. With the original Final Fantasy VII, there's just not much to this. Like, you have the underwater reactor, which is part of the story, and you can't access it again after the story segment, right? You can't just go in there, you can't park the submarine in there and walk around. You have the wreckage of the red submarine, which is, again, another story-related thing. You can't do anything with it other than interacting with the wreckage to pick up the huge material, and that's only assuming that you actually destroyed the red submarine. You also have Emerald Weapon floating around somewhere down there. It's not in this gameplay, because this is gameplay from after I've already defeated Emerald Weapon, but he is down there as well for the super boss fights. And then you have the Sunken Gelnica, which is the optional dungeon, which is pretty damn cool. It's probably the best thing about this. You also have that kind of hidden cave where you acquire the key to the ancients, of course, but again, that is another story-related thing that's not some optional thing to do down here. And then lastly, we have the Lucrezia Cave, the only other like optional thing to do with, with the submarine that does give you Vincent's uh, level 4 limit break and his ultimate weapon. Now, that's not me hating on the submarine aspects of the original FF7 because I do love them. And for their time, they were great, right? But when you really break it down, there's only like potentially six things down there underwater. Five if you somehow miss destroying the red submarine and like half of them are story related. Really, the only like things you can do with the underwater section is the Gelnica, the Emerald Weapon fight in Lucrezia Cave. That's it. That's all. It's pretty fair to, like, one more from the underwater exploration. I mean, it's the whole goddamn ocean out in the middle of all the continents, right? There should be a lot of things down there, even by PS1 standards to a certain degree, right? So I think it'd be kind of cool if we could just find more things down there. Maybe there's debris to collect, like, kind of crafting materials or whatever. But also more things like the Lucrezia Cave, where maybe you're driving around, you see a tunnel over here, you go through it, and then you surface, and you're in some sort of, like, cavern or something that can only be accessed because of the submarine. And kind of a similar thing, too, with, like, the potential world exploration with the submarine. Maybe, like, certain, like, islands or locations that the high wind can't land at, but you can dock there with the submarine. That'd be kind of cool as well. Essentially, I want there to be, like, a level of balance between exploration with the submarine and also the high wind. Obviously, the high wind's the main one. That's where you can explore the entire goddamn world, right? But I'd like there to be, like, maybe we're flying out in the ocean. There's an island that's either really, really small, so, like, the high wind can't land there. Or maybe there's a bunch of trees there, a bunch of foliage, so the high wind can't land. Something along those lines. Got to go back over here get off the high wind, get on the submarine, and drive our asses out there to, like, explore and loot that island. But going back to exploring the bottom of the ocean, speaking of, like, picking up maybe you know, crafting materials, loot, treasure, whatever, they kind of already teased this with Rebirth. I actually did not know this until getting around to making this video. I came across a Reddit post from, like, seven months ago. Somebody came across NPC dialogue in Under Junon, where this old man's telling a story to these young kids. He has a little picture next to him about a flotilla, which was the Republic's capital city out in the ocean that got sunk by Shinner during the war, and that, like, all their treasures were lost to the sea. So they posted this, I'm doing a replay of Rebirth and I just got to Under Junon. I missed it my first time, but there's an old dude telling some kids about a floating city. He says that Shinra ended up sinking the city. Now the treasures of the city are hidden. I'll play the dialogue for you guys really quickly. Many, many years ago, the Republic's capital city once floated on these very waters. That's stupid. Cities don't float. <laughs> it was a large city with many people, built atop a series of connected ships called the Flotilla. That sounds awesome! But it was always rocking back and forth, back and forth. Well, I think I get seasick. <laughs> you get used to it in time. So what happened to the floating city? Where did it go? <sighs> Into the depths. Shinra sank in the floor. The flotilla now rests at the bottom of the sea, along with its hidden treasures. Hidden treasure? For real? And we can get a pretty good look at this painting with photo mode to get an idea of what this flotilla, I guess, looked like. I think it's relatively safe to assume that that dialogue's there for a particular reason, right? Because we could have that story from the old man to those kids and not even mention the idea of treasures, right? It could have just been, this, there was a floating city out there, the capital of the Republic. It got sunk by Shinra. That's it. But the fact that they threw in the hidden treasure stuff feels like they're alluding to be able to explore the ocean with the submarine. We've seen a kind of a similar situation with Remake, with specifically Episode Intermission, where there's the teacher in the Sector 7 slums telling the story to the kids about Stamp the Loyal Helper, which is an allusion to Zack. Okay, everyone, listen up. Time for Stamp the Loyal Little Helper. 
Bow Wow. I'm Stamp, the good boy who never stops helping. Captain's given me a very important mission to buy bread for tonight's dinner. So with his super duper nose, Stamp went into town to sniff out a bakery. He went a sniff sniff here and a sniff sniff there. Even finding milk, sausage, and cake didn't distract him. Using his trusty nose, Stamp was able to find the best, most yummiest bakery in the whole city. And from that bakery, he picked out the best, most yummiest smelling loaf of bread. Thinking about how pleased the captain would be, Stamp went trotting back to base, wagging his tail and singing a happy song. But on the road home, he came across a mogul crying all by himself. What's wrong? Stamp asked the forlorn little fellow. I'm so hungry, I haven't eaten in ages, Koopo. The mogul sniffled. Never fear, Stamp's here, and I know just how to help. So Stamp gave the crying Moogle his loaf of bread. Thank you, Koopo, the Moogle exclaimed, his palm bouncing excitedly. Then Stamp waved goodbye and returned to base. When he got there, he went straight to the captain and told him what had happened. The captain was very proud of Stamp. Helping that Moogle was the right thing to do. Who's a good boy? The captain laughed as he gave Stamp a good scratch behind the ears. And Stamp let out a happy bark, for he knew that he was the good boy. The end. I don't necessarily think that like every bit of background dialogue in the game is important. You know, not every single NPC conversation matters to a certain degree. It's just filler dialogue, right? Just people talking in the city. But I do think certain stuff like this, like her telling that story to the kids, it is an allusion to Zack, and I believe people interpret it as like Zack saving Cloud, Cloud's the Moogle or whatever. And then, like, the old man telling the story in Under Juno, I think there's a level of importance to those particular NPC dialogues. This is to say, shout out to that person for finding that particular bit of dialogue. I've not heard anything about that this entire time that Rebirth has been out. I do think it is kind of alluding to the fact that we'll be able to explore the ocean. It goes hand in hand with the wider exploration that I want from Remake Part 3, but having more places to dock the submarine is just one that I wrote down because it always kind of baffles me how little there is in the original FF7. There's only two. Technically three if you want to count the Lucrezia Cave, right? But you can only dock... Near Costa del Sol, kind of close to the Krell Desert, and then obviously Junon. And that's it. Even though there's not a ton to explore, you do kind of like drive by multiple different continents with the submarine, but you can only dock at like two particular ones. Kind of lastly here for the video, it's something we talked about a bit with the Highwind video with that vehicle, is some sort of fighting or combat. The difference here, of course, is that with the original Final Fantasy VII, there is actually combat with the submarine versus the Highwind. There's not actually that. People are just kind of hoping for that, right? So there's already a precedent set to be doing some sort of underwater fighting with the submarine. Maybe as you're driving around underwater in Remake Part 3, there's monsters, enemies, something like that, that you can, like, fight, shoot at, whatever, besides just Emerald Weapon. It could also be just other submarines, kind of like what you do with, like, the story mission of chasing down the Red Submarine. There could be, like, Shinra Patrol in the waters or something like that that you can, like, engage in combat. Really, to what we discussed in the Highwind video, if there is weapons and you can fight and stuff like that, maybe you can upgrade the submarine to make it stronger or something. You can also throw in, like, the cosmetic discussion, too, potentially, of, like, making the submarine look kind of different or something. I think it's less important to the submarine and more interesting with the high wind, but I wouldn't be against it. I think that's kind of it for the submarine discussion. Again, it's kind of similar to the high wind in some ways for some of the things that I want from it or expect from it. I just don't really know what they're going to do compared to the high wind. Because the high wind's going to obviously give us access to the whole world, in theory. Be able to fly anywhere, maybe even land anywhere. That's hard to say right now. And I don't know what they're going to do with the submarine, though. Like, are we just going to explore that area that we could take the tiny Bronco in in Rebirth, that kind of central area between all the continents? Maybe they just let you only, you know, go below the surface there, but they improve it a lot compared to the original FF7? I don't really know. It's kind of hard to say. I would love to be able to, like, drive around the whole world and shit and have, you know, maybe only islands and things that are accessible with the submarine that you can't access with the high wind or by other means, potentially. That may be excluding the Chocobo breeding stuff, but that's a whole other conversation. But of course, pass off to you guys. What are your thoughts on the submarine and remake part three? What are kind of your wants, your needs, your expectations? We didn't really have like the uh, bare minimum shit that we had with the Highwind video where like this has to be there or it's a problem. I don't want it or whatever. Because I don't really have like a ton of attachment necessarily to the submarine. I do like the underwater exploration, but it's not like, as I talked about in the video, not that great. There's not like a ton to do, right? So I don't really have like a ton of expectations for it specifically, but there are definitely things that I want or maybe expect. Anyways, that's the video. Subscribe to the guys are new social networks in the description below. Follow me on Twitter, Dash YT. That's it. Bye. I used to care what people thought, but now I care more. And nobody out here's got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending, depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that. Like old train, we in here. Like low gain, or leave it. Like old bang.